What's going on? I'm Larry Hoover Jr. and I'm rocking with Street Certified News. Yo, it's your boy L. Hit him, Mr. All Yeah. Y'all already know what it is, man. I'm rocking with Street Certified News. We got behind the scenes, man. We're gonna tie this bitch up. What up, it's your boy Bum J. We rocking with Street Certified News. Exact Great. Yeah, Street Certified News, man. Shout out Big Bo. Shout out Walker. Street Certified, man. Yo, yo, yo. It's your boy Mixel Guapo, man. Street Certified News. And we back with another one. As you can see from the title, man, this week, man, we get real deep, man. The boy Wack 100. A few months ago, there were some uh, some interviews that came out from the dude, uh, uh, Robert Ross, uh, a.k.a. Stutterbox, as well as uh, Mark Stevens. Uh, shout out, man. Big OG Spider Lope, man. You know what I'm saying? They came on his podcast and they told, uh, you know, a story that was, it was very compelling. You know what I'm saying? Also, man, shout out the boy Deuce, man, uh, Active Chucks. Um, he's actually the director of the video, Dial Back 100, that's currently at like 2 million views on World Star right now. Um, it's on their website as well as their YouTube channel. You know what I'm saying? We we dug into into this story, man. We wanted to start from like the most unbiased place possible. You know what I'm saying? In the past, we have made videos. You know what I'm saying? We have made fun of Wack 100, but um, like I said, man, when we saw a video on World Star, you know that necessarily didn't convince us that you know bro was a rat. You know what I mean? We really went into this story like as unbiased as possible so that, you know what I'm saying, we can give you guys the best story. And like I said, man, the information we gonna provide in this video, man, we stand on it 100%. Is literally, we did all the due diligence we could. Before we get started, we need everybody to stop, smack the like button, man. Man, let's get this video to a thousand likes, man. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes we say 500, sometimes we say 400, 300. Man, let's run this video up to a thousand likes. Like I said, man, we did our due diligence in this video. We reached out to people. You know what I'm saying? We checked paperwork. We did everything we could possibly do to bring you guys like the most accurate story on this whole WAC 100 CS2 situation. You know what I'm saying? So this week's story, how the boy WAC 100 exposed himself as a federal informant and how all of this started with the Main Street Mafia Crips and LA Lakers star Shaquille O'Neal, man. Sound crazy already, I know, man. Hey, with no further ado, man, let's get right into it. February 2008, record producer and alleged Mafia Crip Robert Ross, while parked on the Sunset Strip in Hollywood, California, is approached by men he believed to also be associated with the Main Street Mafia Crips. These men directed Mr. Ross to follow them to a different location, to the home of Main Street Crip leader Liddell Dale Dog Rose. It was there where Robert Ross, aka Stutterbox, would testify he was beaten and told to fix his problems with Mark Stevens, a business manager who worked closely with Shaquille O'Neal. Ross would go on to testify that he also formerly worked for Shaquille O'Neal and Stevens as a music producer for artists signed to the record label, Deja 34. This part of the story was like super important, man. Like I said, researching this story, man, uh, the Main Street Mafia Crips popped up, as well as the dude Shaquille O'Neal, man. Uh, we gonna get into kind of how it all ends later, but we really wanted y'all to kind of see this, this part of the story because it's like a lot of coincidences as well as, you know what I'm saying, Wack 100, you know, many times inserting himself into certain situations, including eventually this one. We really wanted to tell y'all this part, but we promise y'all it's gonna get to Wack. You know what I'm saying? Eventually, court records would show that Robert Ross would testify that while he worked for Shaq, Shaq, because of Ross's criminal past, would sometimes ask him to like do weird shit that he didn't feel like was in the, you know, music producer job title. It's also alleged around this time that Robert Ross, AKA Stutterbox, he met Shaq's wife and allegedly may have had an affair with her and secretly recorded a sex tape. This sex tape would be something that uh, Ross would admit that he told uh, Shaq and Mark Stevens about only weeks before this encounter 
with the Main Street Crips. In July of 2008, after word was spread about the kidnapping, ultimately affecting Ross's business, the disgruntled producer would take his information to the LA County Sheriff, claiming Shaq and Mark Stevens paid the Main Street Crips to kidnap him and get him to give up the tape. Also during his meeting, Robert Ross would admit the sex tape was a hoax, meant to extort Shaq and Stevens for a larger cut in their music business. As a result, a wiretap would be placed on Mark Stevens and Ladera Rao's phone. Now let's get to WAC 100. WAC 100, aka Cash Jones by 2008, is a part-time music manager, part-time street politician, and full-time trucking company CEO. Being a former associate of Suge Knight and a Blood Gang member, WAC admits many people in the streets looked at a successful trucking company as a front. But Wack says he always did legitimate business through his companies. It was also during this time that Wack 100, aka Cash Jones, claims he was neighbors with a high-ranking crip named Stutterbox, aka Robert Ross. Coincidentally, Wack 100 also at this time managed Ray J, who was signed to a joint venture between Mark Stevens' label and Suge Knight's Death Row Records. Like I said, man, doing the research on this video, like we ran into like hella weird coincidences like that, bro. Live next door to him. They became friends. He also was in business with Mark Stevens through Death Row Records and Ray J. And it was just a million different ways that like this story was twisted and turning, man. Um, and it kind of like it slowed me down for, for people that don't know that video hit where it maybe like two days ago. During the process of, you know, doing our research, we happened to reach out to LA OG Spider Lope. Oh, uh, we spoke with him and he introduced us uh, to the boy Deuce. For people who don't know, we got uh we got Spider Lope on the call and then just give him your name, bro. Just so that everybody understand, like, you know, where you come from. I'm Deuce M, CEO of Active Chucks, and I also run the podcast. Damu and Keyway Conversations. WAC 100 um, interviewed uh, with academics in Takashi 69. I'm a blood, homie, like from South Central LA. That's not something we condone, and that reflects on my community. So um, I seen him in Death of the Cloud Chaser room, Big Chuck room, and uh, I questioned him on that. Like uh, he was talking about Big U going to see Jim Jones, and I'm like, uh, well, he said, well, yeah, he going to fuck with him because he haven't seen no paperwork. Paperwork, I said, well, rightfully so. You know what I'm saying? Until you see the paperwork, you don't just treat him out. You don't go do a crime with him because you hear speculation. But you don't just, you know what I'm saying, jump to no conclusions. Um, he was like, yeah, that's how I go. I said, okay, but what in your situation, you don't need to see the paperwork. Takashi 69 is publicly uh, exposed as a federal informant this and that. You don't see the hypocrisy in that? And then we went back and forth and he was like, look, I see you understand the street shit, but where I'm at with my business, um, you not there, but I wasn't supposed to come in this room. I think the reason I came in this room was to get with you if you want to do business and whatever you got going on, you need some help, holler at me. I hit him I hit him in his back channel and let him know I think I don't want to, I ain't on no bullshit with you. I just did eight years in state prison. 10 years before that in federal prison. But I ain't trying to deal with you because I'm looking at it like he's a potential rat. Following Ross, a.k.a. Stutterbox, telling the authorities about him being kidnapped by his own gang, he would go on to seemingly continue to live the same gangster lifestyle. No one had yet known Main Street was under investigation, and no one knew Ross was the main witness. In an interview with Bomb First, WAC 100 claims that he became friends with Stutterbox because they were neighbors and that they would occasionally hang out with girls. WAC 100 would go on to claim that one of the women he hung out with, he would later go on to see at the Wilshire Federal Building, dressed in a law enforcement uniform. WAC would go on to claim that these girls that he met while hanging out with Robert Ross, aka Stutterbox, you know, they asked him about drug buys and different things like this happened when he would hang out with him. Um, 
you know, in his interviews, he claims that it's these types of encounters that he believed led to an investigation on him. And, you know, that's why his house was raided and, and all of these things. And, and like I said, it sounds very convenient and it sounds very plausible. But in later in later years, when Wax speaks about this arrest and even when, you know, he goes and gets cops to, to speak on his behalf about this arrest, it's never about drugs. And, and, and you know, he, he claims that these women who were with Robert Ross, a.k.a. Stutterbox, you know, he, he claims that these women were asking him about kilos and drugs. And I guess, you know, they thought maybe he used his trucks to transport drugs. But then when he gets his house raided, it's not about drugs. These type of stories, man, it's very important that, you know, like I said, we don't want to be first, man, but we want to be right. And the big thing about this story is that, you know, that video that hit World Stop, a lot of people considered that video, you know, kind of retaliation uh, uh, for some things that uh, WAC 100 and, and others have kind of been spreading, you know, some, some false stories about uh, Nipsey Hussle's death. And that was something that we took into account, you know, when we spoke with the OG Spider Low, when we spoke uh, with the dude Deuce, and, 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 and we really, you know, when we did our own due diligence, and that was one of the main reasons why we was like, man, we really want to add our own due diligence into this. And I told them dudes, like, look, I want to make sure that it don't look like this is coming from a person who don't like WAC 100. You see what I'm saying? Because it's one thing not to like somebody, and it's a whole nother thing to, you know, literally lay out layer by layer exactly, you know, why this dude is an informant and, 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 and why he's basically admitted to it in interviews if you able to piece the entire story together. So when we spoke with Deuce uh, specifically, man, you know, uh, and, 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 and Big U, you know, his, his name came up. Uh, you know, this is what he had to say about, you know, uh, Big U's involvement in the production of this original video uh, about Wack 100. Bro, this then he on jumped on, Then he jumped on No Jumper and implicated Big U in a conspiracy to commit murder, imp insinuating that it was done because Nipsey Hussle was up next for the grid contract. <laughs> On top of that, he he implicate he get he bring loose booty cannon, loose lip cannon on no jumper, coerce him and have him also implicate him in supplying guns to the Rolling Sixties. As after well he, as after after he already been saying Big U is the subject of a potential Rico case right now, he the one that told the world that he been trying to say the feds is, is interested in Big U for Rico uh, scenarios. And then he doubled down and come out there and tomorrow he's been selling 20 guns and all that. Wow. And extortion. He implicated him in three different crimes. Well, total five different crimes because he listed three names in extortion. That, but, that nigga said Rick Ross and Meek Mill didn't even know Big U sent you, huh? <laughs> wow. Rats. Yeah. Straight rats. But think about this also, bro. Um, He said that it's, I went on Federal Bureau of Prison website, right? If you okay. go on there, type in Lamonte Sims, black, age 45, my case is going to come out. It shows that I was released 2011 for federal custody, right? I'm no longer on federal probation or uh, supervised release, none of that shit. Okay. But when when he, he said that he had a RICO coming, and at another time, they said he got picked up and the RICO was already coming. First of all, if the you don't know the RICO coming because it's sealed until it drops. Yeah. So how, the only way you would know that a Rico was coming if it was true was if you had information from the police. And hey, no honey think he got it figured out. Don't even know. Big you was surprised to see it on World Star. Everybody know Big You got the World Star plug goofy. That you didn't tell no you didn't tell no secret. So why is people so, so, out, nigga? so why is people saying that this yeah, like I was gonna say a lot of fans are saying this this just like get back. For the shit that they put on no jumper, you know what I'm saying? no. I mean, I mean, you know what you say? A lie unchallenged becomes the truth. Facts. So perhaps it is an answer, but it's not a fabrication. It's not a production. Right. Well, let me tell you this, bro. I already worked on this. You've seen the other three videos. I don't have a louder voice of them. I needed a marketing plan, a marketing strategy. So when when what's the name? When Big U seen it, he said, "Bro." More people need to hear this. 
my I got the checking in podcast. If you give me if you give me a, a license, I can get let them promote it for you. On August 5th, 2008, only five months since the kidnapping of Robert Ross, aka Stutterbox, a seven minute wiretap conversation was recorded. The target of the wiretap is Mark Stevens, and he is recorded on the line with another target, Lindell Dale Dog Rouse, the alleged leader of the Main Street Mafia Crips. During the call, Stevens is recorded asking Dale if he wants to speak with the Wack Boy, to which Dale declines. Stevens goes on to say that he doesn't help him, and that he called him out of the blue just the day before August 4th with the request. This recorded wiretap will also be transcribed for future court proceedings. In the official wiretap transcript document, and before you actually get to the conversation, it is noted that the man police refer to as Confidential Source 2, aka Beck, is stated as the person attempting to get in contact with Dale Dog through Mark Stevens. In this exact conversation, Stevens refers to the same man who wants to speak with Dale as the Wack Boy. Coincidentally, the Wack Boy, aka CS2, aka Beck, was calling to inform Stevens and Dale that Robert Ross, aka Stutterbox, was an informant and they were likely under investigation. Eventually, seven Main Street Crips, along with alleged leader Liddell Dale Dog Rouse, were arrested and charged with the kidnapping of Robert Ross, aka Stutterbox. NBA star Shaquille O'Neal would even be questioned about his reported ties to the Main Street Crips, but Shaq was eventually cleared. Ultimately, the overall lack of evidence and inconsistency in Robert Ross's original story led to the charges being dropped. What we want to do is we just want to lay out the facts. We want to lay out things that if you go through yourself, all of these interviews and all of these different pieces of information, if you were to go through all this information, none of this information is refuted. WAC 100 admits that he learned Robert Ross was an informant while he was picking up paperwork at the Wilshire Federal Building. This happened to be after his home was raided. He was never charged with anything. And, you know, uh, he, he admits he was there and he admits that's when he learned Robert Ross was an informant. That's a fact. So that's the first fact. So the second fact that was very important in this case is that the LA County Sheriff wiretap transcripts stated that a man by the name of Back, AKA CS2, contacted Mark Stevens on August 5th. Well, he contacted him on August 4th, 2008, and Mark Stevens then contacted Dale Dog about this call on August 5th, 2008. Mark Stevens referred to this dude as the Wag Boy, and the government referred to him as Confidential Source 2 and Back. Also recently, man, this dude back 100, you know, now he's claiming that he helped seven Main Street Crips avoid jail. I guess recently he was in, uh, you know, on Clubhouse in the depth of the Cloud Chaser room. And he claims that, you know, there's no way he could be a snitch because he actually helped seven Main Street Crip members avoid jail. Which, to be honest, man, like we said, all of this really came full circle, man. Um... You know, it, that is exactly what CS2 did, a.k.a. back, a.k.a. the Wack Boy. He called and he warned the Main Street Crips about a, potent, a, a snitch, not even potential. He called and warned them about a snitch. They were able to distance themselves and really shut down all communication, eventually causing these charges to get dropped. So basically at this point, like we said, man, at the beginning of the video, the boy Wack 100 has finally admitted that he is CS2. I guess his thing is nobody went to jail. He actually helped people get out of jail. But at the end of the day, man, Wack 100 is CS2 in that Main Street Crip Mark Stevens Liddell Ross paperwork. It's the dude Wack 100, man. Shout out to the OG Spider Lope, man. You know what I'm saying? Man, he really tapped me into some real good insight and some real good information. Um, Y'all check out his podcast because, like I said, he has interviews with Mark Stevens as well as Robert Ross Stutterbox. Even though Stutterbox, you know what I'm saying, he told 
but at least you can hear, you know, his part. And, and, and it does help kind of fill in certain gaps or whatever. You know what I mean? Also, man, shout out to Dude Deuce, man. Uh, video on World Star right now, over 2 million views, man. They're breaking down the paperwork uh, of the boy Wack 100. Like I said, man, y'all go check that out, man. Um, hey, it's your boy, Marcel Papa, man. Street Certified News, the most reputable source for urban media, man. And hey, you know what I'm saying? This something we can stand, man. We stand on it. Man, the boy Wack 100, man. CS2, man. Government informant, Rap 100, whatever you want to call them, man. It's, it, it's what it is, man. You know what I'm saying? We, we tried to come at it from the most unbiased, neutral place. We listened to what he said. We listened to what everybody said. We read the paperwork. We looked at the timelines. We looked at the arrest of reports. We looked at everything we could look at. And based off of what Wack has said himself, CS2 can't be nobody else. Like I said, but Wack 100, man. Hey, it's your boy, MX Grapple, man. Street certified news. The most reputable source for urban media, man. Make sure you hit that like, comment, and subscribe, man. Fuck with your boy, man. We love you. We out. Because you might not, can't really relate to how the cripping and blood is goofy, goofy on his part, right? But real niggas across the map know what federal implications are. So if you come out the federal building as a gangster talking about they owe me a favor. That's crazy. Come on, man. That's crazy. That's super crazy. Yeah, go ahead.